listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Happy Endings After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Happy Endings After Show. Hey, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we are doing another Happy Endings After Show. I am your host, Matt Lieberman, and with me, as always... Thomas, at Thomas Guide on Twitter. Yes, yes. and you can follow me at, at Matt Lieberman, L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. We love it when people live tweet us during the show, so please feel free to do so. Join the conversation. I love my Twitter played with. I mean, who doesn't, right? So. Yeah. No, hey, let's, let's, <laughs> let's settle it down. Let's put it on ice. Can we take it down at a the notch? Top, just take okay? it down a notch? I know we're both on Team Plaid tonight. <laughs> we're, both, we're both playing for Team Plaid, but let's let's... Thank you. Good cop, bad cop, or red team, blue team? Oh, no. I, I, <laughs> I'm middle of the road cop. Uh, I'm, I'm neutral cop dunking his donut in the break room. Nice. Yeah. And I'm the coffee. There you go. <laughs> Again. We're both playing for team plaid, but maybe it's not the same team plaid. Cool. So uh, this episode that we're doing is Sab Sabado Frigante, which is the same uh, same title as I believe a, a Mexican soap. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a very a, a very funny episode. I thought from the top that we were getting our Halloween episode this week because we got a we got a brief open with the marionette Jackson Five. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. That. That was hilarious in La Toya. That was that was ridiculous. I know. That's two pylons in a row. Last mm -hmm. week was a classic penny pylon. This week we had a pylon on Dave. Um, but you kind of you. Tis the nature of the show. But you would you would think they would have figured out to get out of the door. They'd have to you know figure things out before they try to get out of the apartment. Yeah. But then you know they, no, it's fun, it's brightest, funnier but... this way. I love when this show does physical comedy. That uh -huh. that was not the end of the physical comedy this week. Um, but uh, just staying with this opening, we'll get mm -hmm. to the rest of it later. Uh, I love, I love that uh, Alex asked which Jackson Five am I? <laughs> like not just which Jackson, which Jackson Five am I? And then of course Dave has to be Latoya because he's he's the lame he's the lame one he's the lame one. It makes him so easy to pile on. Um, and then we got that great moment with the door. And then uh, in the morning. We pick up with uh, everybody eating a Saturday brunch, mm -hmm. and it is not up to the usual standards. No, it wasn't at all. No, it wasn't. Well, Max pointed that out. He yeah. started spit. He, what was he like? He was trying the. He was trying the food, didn't yeah. like it, and then he spit out the orange juice, saying it was instant. Yeah. So no. Yeah, it was from concentrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from concentrate. Excuse me, but yeah. Yeah, he was like, he was like, this is good as hell, and then he eats a bite of sausage. He spits it out. You should go to hell. <laughs> Yeah, because at first I thought he liked it. Like, it sounded like he was excited. Then he started just critiquing everything. Mm -hmm. And then Jane, she apologized. She's like, you know, we had to cut our budget, you know, ever since Brad has been working. They were spending $5,000 a month on of the month clubs, <laughs> including time of the month, which sends you a clock every month. It's not what you think, but it is a clock that tells you when your time of the month is, which is a pretty brilliant idea as, as everyone was like, oh, yeah, that's, uh, I'd, I'd buy that, yeah. And then that kind of, but it kind of started how they all went their own little ways. It started with Penny. She wanted to go buy a car. Yes. It started with that. And then, um, you know, she tried, you know, and then everyone else went their own way. But mm -hmm. she went ahead and tried to purchase that car and left yeah. on her own. But, of course, Jane was not having it. She could tell that something was wrong. And and Creepy Jane. I know. <laughs> Creepy Jane is, 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 some of the time, is the best Jane. Oh, I totally, think. yeah. Because um, she's just, like, super neurotic and super smart and just kind of devious. That crazy dynamic. Yeah. She's, she's crazy. And I think it's why, you know, she balances goofy Brad out is because Brad is kind of crazy but in a much more mild way. Mm -hmm. And she's crazy in a potentially dangerous way. And then... 
and that's I think why they work so well together as a couple. But um, he levels her out really well. He I mean, really he just does. Really, like just he's that middle ground for her. That kind of because you could see in this like when she when Penny got in the car, she looked in the rearview mirror. It was kind of like you know those Lifetime movies when there's like a stalker in the car. Yeah. That's what it was kind of like, and yeah. she jumped. F. Murray Abraham. Huh. Or no, the first one was <laughs> CCH Pounder. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know. If, I don't know I, it's it, if you watch The Shield, uh, she was an actress on The Shield. She was a, a, like a an older African American woman. She became the chief of police. Okay. Or the chief or the uh, head of the barn. That was the it was the police di uh, division they were okay. working in on The Shield. <laughs> so I like that. I also loved. Um, uh, I think Jane had a line about about most deaf. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna see some Jackson fives at this mm -hmm. party. Oh yeah, we're gonna see some marionettes. Oh most deaf. Are we gonna see some most deafs? Probably, but I won't know what they look like. Um, yeah, she's pretty ridiculous. And you know when she when she was just back in that car, like it was hilarious because she literally they had that conversation about Penny mentioned she's like I'm gonna purchase I'm gonna purchase a vehicle and I kind of want to do this on my own. The conversation ended really short. She turned around and then she looked over and Jane was like yeah. creepily next to her, kind of like. You know when you have like the good angel, bad angel, but it was just the Jane angel or the yeah. Jane. It was just the Jane. Have you ever heard of there's this thing called Slender Man? It's like an inter mm -hmm. internet meme. It's like this creepy, um, this creepy being who's just like really scary because he doesn't move. When you see him, it's kind of like the weeping angels on Doctor Who. I don't know if you watch Doctor Who, but like he doesn't move, he just kind of teleports. Okay, that's kind of um, what Jane did. He's just like a long, tall guy in a suit. Who's just way too long and he teleports everywhere and it was kind of like that she's just like slender man a little bit uh, when i like that they kept that theme throughout oh yeah that whole scene that's one thing with 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 the writers on the show every every episode is dense with jokes and they pay off the patterns that they find mm -hmm. and that was a, that was a great pattern with her and um by the end of the episode we had jane uh after being at the car czar, mm -hmm. uh, the car czar comes to her door, Rob Corddry, <laughs> and offers her a job, and he's prepared to give her an offer. She already has counter offers in her bag. But so does he, which is pretty awesome. I know, which is great. He's the be she's the best negotiator he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, but er earlier, of course, in the episode, uh, Jane's coaching Penny on how to how to get this car, and Penny goes up to. Uh, guy the guy who works at the cars are and, and she's like what is your best price <laughs> and, and he's like well do you want the two door phone i'm not paying and she crashes <laughs> through that glass window which was like a great crash and fall <laughs> really really awesome yeah that was um that that was pretty crazy i mean i can you know how just to since we're on that like yeah. 16 stitches is what the stunt woman had that the price oh she got ending, injured yes had to pay for that fall actually i found it on tvguide.com she got 16 stitches mm -hmm, that's all they had to pay for that but i mean well it was a pretty bad fall settle look, settle okay you know like but have you ever seen one of those glass like glass foot or glass wall fall like it's actually pretty bad like when i was a kid and like walking to the mall with my family yeah this guy with UPS happened to walk by a sunglass hut and the thing just fell on the guy and they had to call an ambulance. I mean, those. Oh, wow. Yeah, like it doesn't look like it would be that heavy, but glass like that. Yeah, so 16 sounds about right. See, I thought, you know, why didn't they use sugar glass? I don't isn't, know. That, isn't that what, what shows use when you have to break glass and something? Yeah, that's, that is tweet us. Let yeah. us know why you didn't use it. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, let us know at, at Happy Rights. Well, they wouldn't know. <laughs> They're not the production staff, but still. I'm uh, I'm glad you know it was a sacrifice. Or, you know was... maybe they didn't think it would be that serious because because yeah. of, of the way like because if you look at closer the way she fell, mm -hmm. she could have been protected or something. Maybe yeah. just something. So went... protecting her face. So it's probably just a long sixteen stitches is a lot though. But it's yeah. a lot of stitches. Yeah, but... which Jane said they weren't going to pay for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're not. We're, paying we're for not that. paying for that. <laughs> I hope the show paid for that. <laughs> that would certainly suck to be a stone woman and have to pay for that out of pocket. And then they went upstairs and, yeah. you know, were negotiating the offer. Yeah. And then the, the... Jane is just, like, creepily prescient. She just knows how things work. And she's like, the air conditioning is going to be turned off in three, two, one. Well, and the foreshadowing, you know, we didn't bring this up at the very beginning when um, when Penny's talking to the, to the salesman. Jane's walking around the car describing, you know, a car dealership, a purchase, a car is going into battle, and there's always going to be casualties. Yeah. 
ha 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 and then she's like what are we doing and then you know when they go upstairs she knows everything to a t she's like the guy's gonna walk out car, cars are doesn't exist yeah but then penny plays jane <laughs> and ultimately gets an even better deal earning jane's respect which jane but jane passed out yeah i know which we didn't she was see. lazy on the job a little bit yeah, you know? well i'm wondering maybe something got slipped into her pathetic amount of water uh, yeah. by miss penny I wonder. I wonder or if the, the people at Carzar did. If no. that if Mr. Czar did. No, 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 no. I don't I don't think they would go quite as far as to drug their customers. <laughs> that might be a little too far even for the Carzar. Who knows, by the way, what cars are. And it is a secret. Mm -hmm. But it's not that different from what you expected. <laughs> no. no, it's pretty much what you expected. But I was impressed with Penny, like how she played the whole thing and she got her prize. She played it very cool. And she she broke, you know, she broke she broke the dealer. And the guy the guy even admitted the salesman. He goes, you know, I'm gonna have to get wasted tonight. This has been a really bad day. Yeah. And the Penny's like, well, thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I'm gonna get blackout drunk tonight. <laughs> and Jane was dumbfounded. Jane I'm was gonna like, go get touched by a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, I just want to talk really quickly about iTunes. Uh, guys, please like and subscribe. Uh, to us on iTunes and YouTube. Uh, please leave us very nice comments. We love reading your comments. We love getting your feedback. Um, and comment on the YouTube page. Absolutely, we will try to uh, get back to as many of you as possible. We like to communicate with our fans and uh, just continue to s support this amazing show, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's not, it's challenged in the ratings, mm -hmm. but we, we love it and we want to support great, fast paced, inventive comedy. Uh, as long as it's on the air. So please support our show so we can continue to support this show, which we love very, very much. No, exactly, yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so let's get back to what, let's get, so did you, so back to like the last part of when they were at the car dealership. Yeah. Jane, as soon as, as, as much as she just appeared in the car, she disappeared. Yeah. And that fly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we didn't talk about the fly. But, but Penny. J Jane? <laughs> Jane? Jane? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, like, well, it's just like she's... Jane is a witch. The Kirkovich way? The Kirkovich way was just step one, okay? There are layers to Jane's abilities. But that, yeah, no, that was so funny. That, like, that got, I, was, I was waiting for her to, like, swat the fly. No, because that's no, her friend! Well, no, but at, at the beginning, you'd be like, yeah. what the heck, you know? But yeah. then when she, you know, she kept addressing Jane, Jane... And she kind of was like, holy crap. That's... Yeah, no, it stopped. It's staring at me. <laughs> it's kind of, I think it's laughing. Oh, God. What if it is? But of course it, it wasn't, because Jane can't do that, probably. Maybe. We'll Maybe. find out, right? We'll find out. Foreshadowing. Meanwhile, Meanwhile? Um, Brad was getting used to uh, mid-level, not-quite-poverty life. <laughs> or be, the life just, of Max? The life of the Max's fun... Max's world. Max's world, which, you know, is like sort of the world of the fun employed. Mm -hmm. um, and getting all of his, his Saturday routines, which he, he so misses, for free. Uh, and it was really funny to see how they got all of them. So they went to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Yes, so that... <laughs> and that was for Max. That was Max, for Max because Max wants donuts. Yeah, Max brought up a story about his father. This is a story that Father Max and the ice cube tray. Yeah, and so, you know, they're there, and Brad's like, I can't eat this stuff. I want healthy food. He's like, okay, the next one's for you. This is for me. So yeah. then they go, they go to the Overeaters Anonymous Club. <laughs> yeah, and he, and Brad's just sucking down crudités, just just getting all the carrot sticks. And then this guy comes up, he's overweight. Yeah. This guy comes up and he's like, "That was a really great speech about your dad and the ice machine." And he's like, yeah. "Thanks, I sure wish this was a." Uh, so like, I'm, sure, I'm sure this was a pizza right now. Pizza right now. He's like, "Yeah." yeah. And so you know, then they eat, then they go yeah. to the sex act. Okay, but that one, that one, it, it's like it's kind of commenting on on comedy. It's like the rule of three. It's like, should we go to another one? They have no logical reason to go to mm -hmm. another one. But it was like, yeah, we should, we, we should go right? to another. Keep the yeah. train running. So, you know? rule of three, they have to complete the pattern. So they go to sex and I'm just like, I wish this coffee was a vagina right now. And then he's like, which is why I did that coffee yeah. reference earlier. Ugh. But, like, I, he's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, I really am glad it's not. <laughs> that was so funny, though. And then after that, they left that. 
they went to one of those, you know, when they had the tents with the giving away free stuff, whether it be a newspaper or, you know, credit yeah. card, et cetera. Yeah. They got free clothing, which he's like, you know, which he explained to Brad. He's like, hey, this is, this is how I shot. This is how you yeah. get things on a dimer for free. They do that. And then, you know, Brad mentions how, like, well, usually I would, um, you know, I'd go to my trainer right now. And he's like, oh, why? That's way overdone. So he walks up to this guy, which is a lot bigger than Oh, him. yeah. He slaps a donut out of his hand. And he sucker punches him and, and then runs. Like, yeah, and no, says, and he's like, he made me do it. Yeah, <laughs> and then they just run. It's like it, <laughs> that's one way to get to get motivated to do some exercise. And they run and they run. They run for at least like a solid minute of the episode. Yeah, which is like a long time in real world time. About an, about forty five minutes. Probably, yeah, at least that? that's that's a solid workout. And how then they wound up how many that. calories do you think they burned getting chased well, by the mad guy? Look at I'll, I'll figure that on our app. We'll get yeah, that yeah, yeah. in a minute. We'll, 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 we'll put that to our science division. Science division, pull up my fitness pal. Let's find out 45 minutes of vigorous running. Um, With a square root of, I'm just Yeah, but, square root of pi. <laughs> but then they wound up at that kid's birthday party. Yeah, and even the kid didn't want to hang out. With yeah, them. I know. What was it? It was the kid named Todd. I think the kid's name was Todd. Yeah, and and uh, but no, they were having a heart to heart, and and he's and he's like, um, yeah, it's just like when I was picking boogs. It's like, did you eat it, man? You know, you gotta pick it and flick it, Todd. Um, and Max came as you guys talking about boogs, and it's the same same deal. Uh, <laughs> oh God! When I was a kid, though, like no matter like if you were the kid who picked your nose, everyone said that you ate it, even if you didn't eat it. Mm -hmm. I rem like I'll admit when I was seven, I picked I picked bugs, but I flicked them. You never okay. This is personal, but you don't you don't pick your nose in traffic. I mean, I think no, no, not not as much if it's an emergency. I pick and flick in traffic. You pick and flick in traffic out the window. For me, it's but, but LA we have bad traffic. Yeah. Sometimes it's two hours, and you're like, I got it. Yeah. For know. me, here, here's here's the dividing line on the on the boog picking Let's go. scenario. Okay, when would Matt Lieberman go for the the nose pick? Would be when. Okay, my sinuses must be incredibly stuffed up. Okay, to the point that I'm having trouble breathing. Okay, mm -hmm. there are no tissues at hand. I'm in my car. Mm-hmm. And there are no sheets of paper that I'm willing to <laughs> stuff up my nose and attempt to make an attempt. Yeah, because you'll cut your nose. Paper cuts are the yes. worst, too. Then and only then, and then that finger will remain extended for the length of my drive. You don't. You won't just flick it out the four or five. No. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying it's now that finger is not touching anything else in my mm. car. It is. It that finger's dead to me now until I can wash it. What if you have to make a phone call or something? I don't. Ah, you I, don't, don't, I, have, I have some hand sanitizer to take care of. That. I know, I have a little bottle in my car, but what if it ran out, Thomas? What if it ran out? We're talking that's about do the whole emergency little, scenarios. That's when you hold, do the little wipe out on the jeans and you just Oh, kinda... man, no. I... Our systems oh. detect that a host has wandered off the subject. We're getting oh, back to the show. we are getting shows. off the subject. We're getting back to the yeah. show. But so anyway, so yeah, so, um, so yeah, so they tell him to, to pick it and flick it, and yeah. then they move on, and then where do they head to next? Let's see. They, uh, they get a steam. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Well, no, they got a steam, and then they go to the kid's birthday party because he's dealing with the fact that uh, a guy from his former office saw him, him. getting a steam and thought he was homeless mm -hmm. a month after he left the job. So, you know, it's just the, the takeaway. And what I really loved about the stories, uh, mm -hmm. these two stories especially, is that they could have been just kind of bald, frivolous, we're just having fun stories, but they both connect to the character and they mm -hmm. develop character. Penny is trying to come into her own but uh, and make adult decisions. Yep. Because... Uh, but Jane won't let her go at the same time. Exactly, because she's made so many mistakes in her life, but she's mm -hmm. trying to learn how to do better. Brad, conversely, is still getting used to the idea of, of being unemployed and not having any money because that's how he's always been. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a struggle for him. You know, Max says, you know, maybe I pulled you into Max world a little too early. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did it a bit too quickly, but Brad's like, no, you know what? It's, it's fine. It's something I have to get used to. Yeah, it's the world he has to live in. Like, he chose, he chose to live in that world because yeah. he quit the last job. Well, no, he got fired. No, but the second, remember? Oh, yeah, the, the second, second one. The second job from last that's, episode, that's he did That's true. That. He did. He Because he, he lied to get into it in the hole. Yeah. Exactly. Because, uh, you know, he needs to explore himself. And that's what, an exciting thing for this season is uh, the writers have teased that uh, that Max and Brad are going to have far more stories together. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I'm surprised that his little ventriloquist doll wasn't in this episode. Oh, Sinbrad? Yeah, Sinbrad. I'm you surprised. Can't, you can't have Sinbrad in every episode. That makes I, him less special. Uh, this is true. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, imagine if in Arrested Development, Franklin, yeah. uh, who was Job's puppet, was in every episode. He wasn't. That's but when true. he But when he came back, it was glorious. It's special, yeah. Um, I just want to take one more second to talk sure. about After Buzz. Did you know, Thomas, that After What's Buzz... That? Uh, airs over 50 shows weekly, and we get uh, over 11 million weekly downloads around the world. Yes, I did on, know that. On wow. iTunes alone, uh, one and a half million daily downloads. And if you like this show, our show on AfterBuzz, you probably like another show that we do an after show for, and you should watch it. Because yeah, it'll I be do excellent. MTV's How I Made It. What else are you working on? I, I do uh, Doctor Who, and now since Doctor Who's off the air, we, we're doing Doctor Who Classics. So if you love that show in its present form and you want to get versed on what came before, mm -hmm. you can watch those, catch up with episodes on Netflix, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Okay. So let's talk about the uh, the last story here, and the one that I think we'll have the most in-depth conversation about okay. is is our ongoing arc with uh, Alex and Dave. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of last episode, they said they were going to move in together, and this episode we saw them house hunting or mm -hmm. apartment hunting, and it was obvious that they were having cold feet. Didn't it remind you of a scene from House Hunters International or, um, you know, when it's the Property Virgins? I don't know if you ever watched it on HGTV. No. But it was kind of like they, 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 she took them to several. You, you have one of those over-the-top real estate agents. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're very done up, you know. And they take you to several properties throughout the city, and then you kind of negotiate. It kind of reminded me of that at the very beginning. But those couples usually have their relationship together first before they look for an apartment. Yeah. This was the other way around. They were getting amazing properties. Any Money wasn't an option, but they were the problem. Yes. Which was interesting because at the beginning, how did they refer to that first apartment? To the real estate agent, they couldn't even the word they made up. I, I tried to write it. Down. Shia LaBuffy. Shia LaBuffy. It was LaBuffy. And then, and then it was she's too like, she's like, oh LaBuffy, the the fireplace. Yeah. That yeah, we'll take care of that. She mm -hmm. totally tried to fix it. And yeah, after showing them every apartment in the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. which she referred to, she yeah. kind of had and she counseled them. Yeah, and there, and at the end of the end of the day, rather than admit that there were deep problems in their relationship, mm -hmm. they took the last property of the day that after she blew up at them. And that denial is we're gonna see this this it's maybe she's gonna work at Carzar because that was a hard sell. Yeah, she should <laughs> she should work at Carzar to give Jane a run for her money. Except she doesn't have mystical powers like the Jane. She has four the realtor had four hyphens in her name. Yes. She, uh, it was like Thompson, uh, Tom son, but she was married to a, hot, a Korean for a hot second. Yes, and then... whose whose hobby was smoking <laughs> indoors. Yeah, so there were some issues with that. Yeah, apparently. but um. Alex and Dave, mm -hmm. you know, they're they're in denial. They're uh, going to move in together. Mm -hmm. We're at least going to see them together through Thanksgiving. But this is not going to end well. They're they're they're, I think, too ashamed or too embarrassed to admit the fact that they're concerned that it didn't work out before, and they really haven't worked out all the kinks. Well, they both have cold feet. I mean, exactly. Yeah. They both have cold feet, but they've. They've put the pressure on them, or I took it as they put the pressure on themselves in a sense, because they told their whole group of friends, "We're back together." Yeah. Well, they told America too, but we're you know we're <laughs> we're, we're getting back together. Hey, now we're going to move in together. Yeah. You know, so that's a they, big step, and you can't like they didn't have to, on that. They didn't have to tell everybody that. I mean, yeah. they they kind of put that, and so now you could tell, like you know, as you mentioned, when they signed and they were in the apartment after everyone walked away. And, uh, you know, Penny made a comment about the restroom and, you know, Brad kind of checks around that, like, hey, you're getting too comfortable around me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then they kind of look at each other and they kind of got awkward because they were like, holy crap, we're going to do this. But it, it's kind of like, you can see they're not ready. Yeah. But they, but they've put themselves in that box. So it's. It's true. You know, once you make that, once you take that leap, mm -hmm. you're on the, you're on the ledge there. You'd have to tell everybody. And it's so embarrassing, especially after how she left him at the altar and mm -hmm. this has already failed once before and they told the realtor that yeah i know and, and you saw her face when she heard that she's like uh oh yeah oh god yeah the, your love story is unique oh boy but like now they're going to have to say that admit that it failed twice mm -hmm. i don't think that either of them i think their ego is too big to admit that mm -hmm. or at the very least they they just they refuse to admit it they refuse to see it what do you think it is that brings them together and in, in, into the circumstances i mean they're both very spontaneous would you say that's yeah what it is about the personalities that brings them together i think it's a mix of 
of spontaneity mm -hmm. and and just a comfort level. They've known each other since they were kids. Mm -hmm. They dated for years and years. They they don't have to work too hard to mm -hmm. just get by as a couple. Do you okay. know what I mean? No, totally. Like they're they're not really gonna fight. Mm -hmm. I think he likes being needed. Like Dave's kind of a needier guy, mm -hmm. and Alex is a little independent. She's out independent, but she's also kind of out to lunch in terms of like she doesn't know what a lot of stuff is. And I think he likes being the guy who knows everything and kind of can kind of back her up. Yeah, you know, he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to take charge, but he is in charge. Okay. In that relationship, she's gonna yeah, I go. See that. She's gonna go and do something, and he's gonna be there to mop up the pieces. He mm -hmm. still feels like he's in charge. But he doesn't have to actually really add anything to that relationship. It's comfortable for him yeah. in a sense. And I think she makes him kind of cooler by proxy. Because that's something that he's embarrassed about. Because he is kind of lame. Like, he's the LaToya of the yeah, group. Yeah, I mean, he's the he LaToya. Just, there's nothing, there there's an... nothing special about him. No offense, LaToya, but, yeah. you know. It was, it was that episode last season um, with... Um, Max and Grant, mm -hmm. and everyone loved Grant so much, and Dave couldn't handle it because, in his mind, he's the coolest guy in the room, and he can't take the idea that he's not. Yeah. And I think that having uh, someone like Alex to bounce off of, who is that free spirit, who is a bit more out there and opinionated, but doesn't always know what she's talking about, gives him a natural role to fill. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes him feel useful, it makes him feel loved. Mm -hmm. We're getting so deep for a sitcom <laughs> on ABC. Totally. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I totally agree with you. I think they have a really good dynamic, but I feel, I feel that the sense that they're so spontaneous, it does them more damage than good. Sure. Because they don't think, th if they would just think things through, I mean, it wouldn't be as entertaining. Yeah. So it's written well. They're reckless. Yeah, they're, they're, that's, the, that's the perfect word. Bingo. I wish we yeah. had a sound effect for that. That's awesome. Yeah. But because, but, no, I mean, they're, they're very reckless, and that's, that's what got them into the, when she left him at the aisle, you know, everything that's yeah. happened. It's because they're extremely reckless in their decisions. And I think and that's, that's how they have this lease. Yeah. <laughs> so now they're. Maybe that's the thrill. Maybe that's the thrill of their relationship is it's kind of a roller coaster ride. It's a roller coaster ride without that many like actual fights. What do you think of this? There's two two relationships and there are on leases now or new leases on life per se. You have Penny in her new car with Jane. Yes. And then you have the new apartment, which is a lease, and then you have Max and Brad, which mm -hmm. are kind of stagnant. So, I mean, everyone else is kind of moving forward and they're kind of being left. Do you yeah. notice that? Um, I think Maybe that, I'm I think taking that a leap, but. Brad is taking a step back to move forward. Uh -huh. um, I think that this he's getting to explore himself in a new way. Mm -hmm. And whatever his next career step is going to be, mm -hmm. it's going to be very much informed by this free time. Mm -hmm. I think that Max hasn't really gotten anything to do so far this season. It is only two episodes in, mm -hmm. but it's going to be interesting to see what being left alone again, now that Dave's gone and Penny's going to have her boyfriend and potentially being alone and not having someone to bounce off of all of the time to feel needed again and to feel like, you know, you're being entertaining and being entertained, what that'd do to him. I kind of foresee him trying to date and, yeah. like, trying to, like, fill that void somehow. Or maybe trying to find friends through, like, some kind of online website type thing or possibly trying to date to fill that but going through, like, really bad dating situations because he's so desperate to... Yeah. To make up that, because everyone else, like you said, I, that's the only, I kind of see him, I mean, it could be completely wrong, but see him kind of going some kind of route like that. Do you know what I would love? I would What's love that? if, um, I don't know if you know, on, uh, there was a show called Murphy Brown back in the 90s. Yes. Yeah. Who doesn't know Murphy Brown? Okay, some people don't know. But uh, on every episode of Murphy Brown, she would have a new assistant. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if now that Dave's out of the apartment, Max just has a new roommate every week for a certain period of time, and they comment on it, and it's just weirder and weirder roommates. You know what? That's actually really good. Yeah, I could see that. That's I actually really I think I could see them doing that and commenting on it and having a ball of just like, you know, why is Max Murphy Browning these roommates? Yeah, and then and then it, they could turn around and being like Max, it, this roommate, and then they could be he'll be finding the faults, and they'll be like, no, Max, this one was actually not bad because yeah. it's actually you, Max. Yeah, and we all liked him. Mm -hmm. We all liked him. Why did you that. have to make him run away? Or then be like, hey, we want to hang out with this one, but he's not my roommate. We're still gonna hang out with him. We like him, so you can go. <laughs> oh yeah, and then imagine I can what see that Penny would... doing that or someone. Yeah, yeah, and what what that would do to Max of like you would pick this stranger over Which me penny would bring up you know she'd bring up well when i was injured and the yeah. masseuse you you misery yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> yeah, on that note uh i think it's time to discuss news and gossip for the week let's do it after buzz tv news all right so according to tvguide.com uh they interviewed david casp 
and uh, the creator and showrunner. Exactly. And you know, the first question was, is it just friends between Dave and Penny? So the writers are torn. They're torn whether or not Dave and Penny should get together and have not conclusively decided on what to do about that. Oh wow, so they haven't even they haven't even decided whether or not they will ever get together. Yeah, they're they're saying that there may just be a moment or maybe something might happen in an upcoming episode, but the truth is we'll always put obstacles in their way. That's really interesting cuz like I, to me I thought okay, if they're bringing this up, mm -hmm. then it's got to be paid off in some dramatic fashion, but maybe it's just it's one of those things just when you're friends you have these thing feelings crop up and they don't always become a relationship they don't always wind up in something big and explosive it could be just a smaller beautiful moment it's like they hook up basically yeah that's, that's, <laughs> tom's piling to everybody he uses I mean, the, the, most, down, right? the most beautiful words oh you know yeah, yeah they, 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 they bone they, they're gonna do it i just said they, they hooked up but yeah, they bone, yeah. yeah based on last always use protection yeah so <laughs> so let's have the second one second speaking one. of jealousy well if they got jealous jealous much is the next thing according to tvguide.com uh there's also no plan yet for penny and pete's romance to end if it will at all so, and the longer it goes on the more it will work max which we mentioned earlier aka you know he plays by, he's played by adam Polly. Right. Also, or Dave too. Right. So uh, the 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 new boyfriend that she's getting this this uh, this season, played by Nick Zano. What's his name again? Um, Pete. Yes. Yes. yes Pete, Pete. Yes. So uh, they haven't decided. So it may last the entire season, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Which I thought that that was going to be, you know, like seven Probably or eight episodes, and then maybe push it aside. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's cool. I I'm really eager to see what she's like with a boyfriend because it's going to cause her to grow. She hasn't had really a long-term relationship in it seems like years. Mhm. Mm well, and you know there's a quote, you know, you know that's mentioned here. It's like when Penny gets into a steady relationship with Pete, who's nice and cool and good-looking, it's like everyone's questioning what's happening to Penny. That's true. So it's, you know, which goes back to the whole Max thing. So it's going to probably put Max a little out of his comfort zone. Oh, yeah. Soon it's going to be Max who's getting piled on <laughs> instead of Penny. <laughs> which would be pretty funny. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was, uh, since we're coming, we were, you know, Halloween's here, but, you know, Thanksgiving is what, we're about a month away from Thanksgiving mm -hmm. or less. About a month away. The first Thanksgiving, um, you know, when Dave and Alex settled in, they're going to they're gonna host Thanksgiving at their place, during which Dave will make it his mission to give the group an authentic Native American Thanksgiving experience. Oh, Dave. Yes, and there will also be pilgrims involved in scalping. Which, scalping? Yes, which Cass teases. And yes, Dave, Dave Navajo's jacket will also make an appear, a reappearance. Oh, God. Okay. So this We're, should be a Thanksgiving. This is going to be a Thanksgiving to remember. Yes. All right. Well, uh, I think that's all for <laughs> that's us, all I guys. That's all for now, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, again, I am Matt Lieberman, uh, at Matt Lieberman on Twitter, M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. I'm Thomas Pyle, and you can tweet me at ThomasGuy, T-O-M-A-S-G-U-I-D-E. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Good night. Yeah, thanks for having us. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.